the drug is a small molecule nuclear receptor agonist, meaning it turns on and off a myriad of genes involved in uh, brain uh, health, uh, brain metabolism, both glucose metabolism uh, and lipid metabolism. And it works to correct uh, the underlying cause of dysfunctional brain uh, metabolism or, you know, ability to, to produce and use energy. Um, and that is a, because it is increased, the brain in Alzheimer's is increasingly becoming more resistant to the actions of insulin. Insulin is a key regulator of so many functions in the brain. If you had to pick the most important one, it would be insulin. And so uh, we are focusing on that to correct the resistance to insulin that becomes more and more apparent as Alzheimer's disease progresses. This trial was assessing three different doses of our drug, T3D959, dosed uh, orally once a day for 24 weeks. Uh, versus placebo. And we were assessing this in uh, patients with mild to moderate uh, disease severity, Alzheimer's disease severity. And uh, outcome measures included uh, cognition and function. But what was uh, most uh, unique about this trial was it was probably one of the most exhaustive assessments of blood biomarkers of uh, things that are going wrong in Alzheimer's disease. And we, uh, so that's uh, basically the study. What we, our target engagement was evidenced in the periphery by improvements in glucose, uh, insulin, HDL triglycerides that were statistically significant improvement in all the right directions. Secondly, a central target engagement was evidenced by seeing increases in cerebral glucose metabolism in the brain via FDG PET imaging. What happened in the study was that we didn't, we were surprised. We did not meet our primary endpoints on cognition and function. And we saw a placebo effect that was uh, kind of crazy. So we looked at, uh, uh, we saw that there were subjects, uh, we had a low percentage of ApoE4 uh, positive subjects in the study, lower than is typical for a U.S. study. We were observing uh, practice learning effects in the cognitive tests. And uh, importantly, we had looked at a new highly validated blood biomarker of really amyloid uh, pathology, amyloid plaque pathology in the brain. And uh, 55%, there was, a, there was a certain cutoff, and we worked with C2N uh, diagnostics to establish a threshold below which patients are not likely to have AD pathology, uh, above which they almost certainly do. And when we looked at our subjects, 55% of our subjects had the uh, the AD pathology biomarker, the PTAU217 ratio, uh, but 45% didn't. Uh, so they may not have had true Alzheimer's disease. And so <clears throat> that uh, the meaningful trial data really comes from the group with the positive blood biomarker for Alzheimer's disease pathology. Now, in this study, this was, you know, designed and uh, started nearly four years ago and then halted a bit with the pandemic. Uh, but these biomarkers weren't around. Um, so this is uh, really uh, 
quite fascinating. And uh, what we saw in this, uh, I'll call it a subgroup, right? With true AD pathology, we saw an improvement in cognition. We saw a reduction in plaque burden and a restoration of brain health with numerous metabolic pathways being corrected, uh, being brought back to uh, homeostasis. And uh, so the, the trial was quite successful in that small group. Un un you know, unfortunately, that, uh, you know, we had fewer numbers per arm, so you couldn't really show statistical significance, but in a lot of these biomarkers, we did. And even in the uh, plasma A beta 4240 ratio uh, of amyloid burden, another marker, uh, we saw statistically significant uh, improvement. And so this is in a drug that is orally taken. We had no evidence of ARIA. Um, and we saw an effect on that biomarker that was as good as lecanemab observed at six months dosing um, with the same biomarker. Um, but when you look at our high P tau group uh, that had the AD pathology, we actually were twice as good as lecanemab. Now, that's that's a biomarker, but it's highly correlative with, with plaque burden. And the beauty of this drug is, you know, low cost, um, <clears throat> no aria to speak that we found any evidence of an oral delivery, no infusions. So the study achieved its goal. Okay, the, the goal of a phase two is to inform the design of a phase three. We have found the ideal dose uh, for safety and efficacy to study in phase three. And we have now a way to pre-screen patients uh, using the PTA217 ratio marker to ensure we get uh, patients in there that will be responsive to therapy. Uh, 